the reality that I create is based off of my beliefs, not other people's beliefs. Mm -hmm. So unless we internalize other people's beliefs about ourselves, we're not going to manifest that. We're not going to create that. The only thing that creates our reality is our own belief systems. Part of the reason why I wanted to have the podcast was because Lori and I had conversations about, I don't know, a year and some change ago. And we had said, I wish more people were talking about this. Mm -hmm. Like there is something about looking at success and an aspiration path and um, like frameworks on how to achieve that, which we love and we consume and we create. Yeah, for sure. But then there's also this like undercurrent of like the stuff that we don't talk about. So was there ever a time during your white wall era that somebody had said something in a comment or a passing that betrayed the truth of your reality and made you feel doubtful of it? So mm -hmm. someone's just like, you're talking about manifestation and you just got off your grandma's couch. Whether or not they know that or not, was there ever an instance then or thereafter yeah. that revealed a chink in the armor? And then how did you come back from that? Like, yeah. how did you work your way through that? Yeah. I kept telling myself to just like, yes, this is my current reality, but I have to ignore it. Like, I have oh. to keep in mind the reality that I'm creating. And according to quantum physics, like if you can think of something, it already exists. There's a version mm -hmm. of you in another timeline that's already living that life, right? And it's a matter of you stepping into that version of you that will cause the two timelines to collapse. When people talk about collapsing timelines, that's what they mean. When they talk about quantum leaping, that's what they mean. You're just matching the frequency of what you want and you can't help but attract it. Like the universe will align opportunities, people, circumstances, all these things in order to um, come to you. And then all you have to do is say yes to it. So at the time, like, yeah, of course, I wasn't living my dream reality. Do I, did I get negative comments? Of course I did. Like my friends, I barely had any friends at the time, but my family members especially were like, Catherine's lost her mind. Like <laughs> for her. We have no, a I'm crazy serious. one, everyone. I will never forget actually New Year's Eve um, before I moved to LA. This is when I was still pursuing Beachbody. I was wearing headphones sitting on my laptop in the living room, just doing my thing, making my Facebook posts like, hey, do you guys want to buy this product for me? Right. Like whatever I was doing or DMing people or messaging. And I wasn't listening to music. And we had family over for New Year's Eve, like Christmas, New Year's Eve. And they were all in the kitchen. And I wasn't listening again. Like I, I could hear them, but they didn't know I could hear them. And I heard them say things like, Oh, Catherine, poor girl. She's so smart. She's just wasting her life. She's just throwing it away. Like I, I was just hearing horrible things. Like my mom and my mom knows this. My mom and I are super close today, but she was like, I'm just really concerned that all you'll ever amount to be is a janitor. And I'm like, mom, like who says that first of all, right? Like my mom was coming at me with her own trauma but it was just like nasty, nasty things. And it took everything in me to have a very strong mindset and just be like, the reality that I create is based off of my beliefs, not other people's beliefs. Mm -hmm. So unless we internalize other people's beliefs about ourselves, we're not going to manifest that. We're not going to create that. The only thing that creates our reality is our own belief systems. And also, like I said, unless you internalize their belief systems, like you're just not going to create it. Can I braid two things? Please. Okay. Because the Catherine, you were on that couch listening to people were saying, and you were not, you were making the active decision to not internalize their belief about you. A couple of weeks ago, I was watching on Instagram, a post that you um, created and you were folding Orion's clothes and there was, you overheard mm, somebody mm -hmm. say something. Can you yeah. take us there and then yes. talk about how you're not internalizing? And then specifically, I got the chills in my right arm to mm -hmm. talk about how you would never allow or believe what somebody said about your son, mm, about mm -hmm. what they're saying about you. Yeah. Real quick. The thing that came back to me is when people communicate something to you, like their opinion, a thought, a comment on Instagram, they're actually telling you more about themselves than they are about you. Like people are only reflecting their own internal world at you. So you can never take it personally. Um, in terms of, okay, so that week was a really weird, hard week for me for whatever reason. Or things, you get the tea. Like mm -hmm. I'm things, just like, y'all buckle up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things that normally don't affect me were affecting me. I just had gone through a spiritual retreat. So I was kind of coming back into mm -hmm. like the world from that. And at the time, you know, like the war broke out in the world. So there's it's heavy, heavy stuff was going on. And I was just kind of like, whoa, what happened over the weekend? Like, let me just come back to this. And for whatever reason, 
I received the most amount of haters on the internet that I have in a really long time. Like people had all these opinions. People said like, who am I to get a Birkin for my birthday when there's a war going on in the world? And like, who am I to care about such materialistic things? And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm just celebrating my birthday. I'm sorry, you guys. And normally never affects me. Right. And then it culminated with, um, it's my birthday. My baby just had a blowout and I'm changing him, uh, with my husband while we're FaceTiming a family member. And it's actually two family members. So we have the phone on a tripod and we're like changing the baby. And then I like, they think that we're not listening, but I hear out of the, out of my ear. Um, oh my God, look how fat Catherine's gotten. And as someone who really struggled with postpartum, like weight loss and finally figured out the root of my, um, where that's coming from. But I really, really struggled. Like I really wanted to hide from the camera for the most, for the most part of the last year. Like if you, if you look at my camera roll right now, there's barely any pictures of me. It's usually like screenshots of things or like content for the internet. And if there's photos of me, it's like a professional photo shoot. So it's something that I've been struggling with. And it finally hit me one day where I'm like, wait a second, what if I just manifest this? Like, what if I just apply what I do in my business and all these other areas of my, my life? Why am I not applying it to this area of my life? And it just like hit me and I've been on this journey since like the summer. And so that really affected me because so much of like eating disorders and things that I struggled with as a teenager came from my family constantly harping on my weight because I was also a dancer at, at the time. And my ballroom dance teacher, when I was like eight years old, would always say like, suck in your stomach, suck in your stomach, suck in your stomach. You need to lose weight. Stop eating so much. My partner would be like, Catherine, you'd be a better dancer if you were 20 pounds lighter. Right. So that was always like that programming was there. And so this really triggered me. And I was just so thrown off for like an hour. I just cried um, on my birthday and I decided to go on a walk with my son because anything to stretch them till bedtime, right? Yes. Like when they're getting close, <laughs> we're going to go on a stroller and he loves stroller walks. So we're going on a stroller. And one of my tips that I give for like squashing a limiting belief is to put in third person perspective. Like imagine that someone, your best friend is coming to you for advice and they had that limiting belief. Like what would you tell them? And for whatever reason, when it's someone else's limiting belief or someone else's, right. Right. it's so easy for you to fix. You're like, this is obvious. The answer is right here. Or like <laughs> that's obviously a lie. And I remember looking at my son and it just hit me where I imagined that he was me or like he had a social media account and he was getting the same comments that I was getting all week. And instantly I looked at him and it just was like, well, of course that's a lie. Like it just immediately was like lie, right? It sounded so ridiculous. I'm like, obviously this is not the truth of my son. Like regardless of what he looks like, regardless of what he does, these are not his truths. This is not in alignment with um, him being a child of God or child of the universe. It's like a total lie. And from that point, I was able to instantly reframe it and see it as like, oh, if the way that I love him so much as my child, like unconditional love, like whatever you believe in, creator, divine, divine intelligence, God, angels, universe, whatever, like you are loved in the exact same way. And so whatever you see as the truth for your children, like that's how God sees you. And obviously these things are lies and they're not the truth of who I am. And that just immediately allowed me to shift it and get it out, 